For the first time in four decades, an American company broke ground on a next-generation nuclear power plant in the U.S. The company behind the new technology is TerraPower, and it's backed by billionaire Bill Gates. Nuclear power is carbon-free, which means it doesn't emit the greenhouse gases scientists link to climate change. And Gates is building a plant in Wyoming at a cost he estimates will be $10 billion. TerraPower's new reactor uses liquid sodium rather than water for cooling, which the company says makes nuclear power cheaper, safer, and more efficient. We spoke with Gates Thursday just after he'd broken ground. How many more of these do you have planned? Um, and what well, is that going to depend on? We have discussions with utilities uh, about building tens of these, uh, but you know we really only have huge impact and success if we get uh, past 100. What's we, Wyoming has to open before you do these, or? Uh, we can start four or five in parallel. The final, final approval uh, from the Regulatory Commission is out there in 2030, uh, and so that then gives you the green light to turn the others on. But you can start the construction. The demand for electricity in the United States for the first time in a long time is going to go up quite a bit. It's mm -hmm. electric cars, buses, uh, some people use electric heat pumps in their homes. Uh, and just in the last year, with these artificial intelligence breakthroughs, all the big AI companies are saying, okay, we need to build uh, lots of data centers. And so uh, if we don't have a nuclear to complement the wind and sun, uh, the country will fall behind the demand for electricity. President Biden has said, even he, with all of this money being invested in green energy, that the United States still will need fossil fuels for some time. I mean, that, that's the reality of what you're sketching out here. It's not either or. Right. Well, the growth will be in uh, the clean sources, sun, wind, uh, and nuclear. Uh, but we won't get there to be 100% green. You know, uh, you know, the goal is to get rid of all emissions by 2050. Uh, even that's pretty ambitious. All of the clean sources will have to do a great job of getting their costs down. When the public hears about nuclear energy, though, they think of some of the worst cases that and mistakes, Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania, Chernobyl in the former Soviet Union. They think of Japan even just after Fukushima in 2011. And after that, Japan's government reacted pretty strongly. They shut down many of their plants. They're starting to put them back online. But there was a very sharp reaction then. So it, how do you respond to people who say, well, I don't really want this in my backyard? Well, nuclear, um, you know, they, this after heat problem that when you shut a reactor down, it still has heat. That's why Chernobyl was a problem and, and Fukushima. Um, our design, that it goes away because since we use this sodium to cool everything, mm -hmm. it can absorb all that heat. This is the natrium. Right. And so those accidents were both first and generation, second generation reactors. The third generation reactors dealt with that with a lot of complexity. So those reactors are quite safe, but the cost overruns meant that the electricity will be very, very expensive. We solved the, the safety problem with a much simpler approach, but we had to start from scratch. For people at home to understand, your reactor and most um, advanced reactors require this new high assay, low enriched uranium. So that supply is really very much owned by Russia. How does America get that fuel without putting money in the pocket of Vladimir Putin? Yeah, so the uh, US Congress recently passed a bill that we supported uh, that says none of the fuel uh, will come out of Russia, and so the US won't be a customer of that any longer. But uh, that's not immediate, right? Uh, that's right, but the, the money in the bill will get the supply base going in the United States. Uh, we also have a supplier in the UK. We've got a supplier in South Africa. And so we can go to the free world and meet our fuel requirements. The, the reason we had to delay our schedule from 2028 mm -hmm. to 2030 was because of this fuel problem. And we didn't anticipate a war in Ukraine that changed that completely. And so now building up the alternate plan uh, 
with the federal government helping us figure that out, uh, that's now completely in place. So how long before the U.S. can rely on its own fuel for these nuclear reactors? Can America become completely energy independent if it's actually switching to nuclear? Yeah, so the, uh, the U.S. is very lucky that between uh, the U.S. and Canada, uh, there's quite a bit of uranium. Even in Wyoming, and specifically, uh, there are good uranium mines there. But you have to mine for it, and well, you there are environmental to, you have concerns to mine around it, that. And you have to have the manufacturers, and that's uh, the congressional uh, 2.8 billion uh, that they just passed is to get a, a North America supply chain going. Uh, and it was great that the Congress took care of that problem because they're the ones who said, we don't want you to buy fuel from Russia. And as an environmentalist, you don't have concerns about this kind of mining within the United States. Well, all mining you know, is subject to, uh, in the case of the US, a lot of environmental review to mm -hmm. make sure that you know, as you're pulling stuff out, as the tailings or where are you putting those and how do those get used. So you know, I feel very comfortable that the US is gonna make sure that, uh, that there's no environmental concerns about uh, US and, and Canadian mining. Are you confident that you can continue this project regardless of who wins a majority or the White House? Yes, I, I'm quite confident. I mean, I'm, you know, I meet with lots of Republicans. I meet with lots of Democrats. I'd say that the, their support for nuclear power is very impressive in both parties. The reasons they support nuclear power may not be identical. Uh, the Republicans may emphasize the security issues, you know, energy security, exporting these uh, power things uh, to the entire world. Uh, the Democrats value those things, but they also value that it's a clean source of energy uh, and that it's because it's not weather dependent, it can fill in in the periods where the renewables are, are not producing. Mm -hmm. And so of all the climate-related work I'm doing, I'd say the one that uh, has the most bipartisan energy behind it is actually this, this nuclear work. Well, Donald Trump talks about renewable energy quite a lot on the campaign trail, but when he was president, uh, he did sign bills that encouraged nuclear Yes, yeah, so nuclear, nuclear really is special. It's its uh, own category of green energy? Not because it's green. Uh, there are people who don't value that part of it, although I wish they would. Mm -hmm. They value it because of the U.S. leadership. And you really don't want the nuclear reactors around the world made by your adversaries because uh, it's economically a huge job creator and because the materials involved in these reactors possibly could be diverted. You want your eye on you know, making sure that it's not feeding into to some military-related activity. And so the U.S. leadership in this space uh, has a lot of strategic benefits. Mr. Trump has talked about repealing the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA. He said that's one of the first things he wants to do. Yeah, I mean, it takes both houses of Congress. Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of the provisions uh, in there would be preserved. You know, a lot of projects have started. They're creating jobs. A lot of those jobs are in, you know, red states. Why, why doesn't the administration talk more about that? Well, a lot they, of those jobs are in red states. Yeah, because those states, um, you know, move faster. They have a lighter regulatory load. Um, you know, West Virginia, Wyoming, Texas, a lot of them uh, are where the pilot plants are being built. And the more that happens, the more that you'll probably see bipartisan support. I'm not a good predictor of uh, 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 elections, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of those credits probably will survive. Uh, it's possible some of them won't. The U.S. created, right, the nuclear space, really, with the Manhattan Project. Do you think we can get back as a country to really leading on the innovation on this front? Well, there is competition. You know, the country that's building the most nuclear reactors today uh, is China. Uh, and, you know, they're serious about diversifying their energy sources and, and getting rid of their greenhouse emissions. The U.S. just tends to be more innovative, whether it's artificial intelligence or new medicines. You know, if we unleash the the innovation power of this country, we tend to lead. And I feel great about the support we're getting from the federal government in this nuclear space to take our history, 
of excellence and solve the problem that our current reactors are just way too expensive. And so let's make the changes, uh, mm -hmm. you know, be willing to innovate, out-innovate our foreign competitors uh, to maintain that lead.